What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. My name is Nicholas. It's Thursday. Thus is this week's season-long video. This will be relevant for season-long. This will be relevant for Dynasty. This will be relevant for football fans far and wide. We're talking about free agency. I know the season is not even done yet. We've got playoff games. We've got Super Bowl. We've got the Pro Bowl. Even though I think the Pro Bowl might be canceled. I don't even know. I don't even give a shit. It's basically been canceled in my mind every year that I've watched football. But over the last few years, free agency has been a lot of fun, especially when it comes to fantasy football. New faces, new places, old faces, new places. What's the stupid ass fucking phrase that people use? I don't know. But today we're going to be talking about specifically the quarterbacks and tight ends. This is deep on every position quarterbacks tight ends wide receivers running backs. so i need to split it up because we've even got dudes that are relevant at the quarterback and tight end position where most of the time nobody gives a shit but we've got so many dudes at running back and wide receiver that we're gonna have to split this up we're gonna have to do two separate videos for it so today today matters we're playing more and more super flex we're playing more and more tight end premium leagues we're just playing a whole lot of fucking fantasy football okay so this episode matters it matters for your favorite nfl team it matters for your favorite fantasy football team we're gonna do quarterbacks we're gonna do tight ends and the next week we're gonna do running backs and wide receivers so Tuck your shirts in, stop yelling, and let's eat. Free agency is funny. Fantasy football is more funny. More funny in like a clown way because according to Twitter, 27 teams need a new NFL quarterback. It'll be 28. As soon as Lamar Jackson throws his first interception in the next playoff game, there'll be 28 teams that need a new starting quarterback. That's not how the fucking way this works. Not every team has a top quarterback, a top fantasy quarterback, a top 15 option waiting in the wings. Thus, all of these free agent options are important and could make or break your super flex lineup, your dynasty lineup especially, okay? So we're going to dive in. We're going to throw up the quarterback free agents on the list, and we're going to go through them one by one, look at their outlook, what the season was like for them last year, how we're going to look at them going forward, and what impact they might have moving to a new team. The first thing I want to address is not Dak related, but we will stay within the NFC East. That is Carson Wentz, okay? I don't know if you guys know this guy, Andrew Brandt. Now, Andrew Brandt was an executive for the Green Bay Packers. He was the vice president of the Green Bay Packers for a long time, well-respected, well-known guy. He was there for the Favre years. He was there for the Aaron Rodgers years. So he's he's seen some shit when it comes to the uh, quarterback position. He also has a very good podcast that I listen to called The Business of Sports by Andrew Brandt. He is now in the Gary Vaynerchuk sports agency business. He works for Vayner Sports. Very intelligent guy. You should listen to what he says. But from my understanding of everything that he knows about the cap space and how the NFL works and all the behind the scenes of the front office executives, which is what he talks about in his podcast, given Wentz's contract, there is close to a zero close to a 0% chance that Carson Wentz is not in Philadelphia next year. We as fantasy people like to make things up and say, oh, Wentz is going to be the starting quarterback for Indianapolis or San Francisco or XYZ. It ain't happening. Now, Carson Wentz has a cap hit of 34 million dollars next year to philly they, they can't just drop him and get rid of him because it's one that's just dumb it's unrealistic it's not it's not what's going to happen here that would cost the team 60 million dollars but what that 34 million dollar cap hit does not only accounts for if they keep him on the team if they trade carson wentz to another team they still have to pay 34 million dollars in dead cap there is no upside of moving him this is a quote from a, an article that andrew brandt wrote just three weeks ago which I will link in the description for you guys if you want to read it it's very in-depth and it goes over everything about Carson Wentz and the situation in terms of trading cutting post June 1st trades and cuts and shit and like everything that's realistic about what could happen okay all the details of that this is the first this is the first quote of the article of the 1800 plus players in the NFL there is no player into which a team has made more of an organizational investment than the Eagles have in Carson Wentz there are NFL players for whom teams have invested multiple top draft picks there are NFL players for whom teams have invested contracts totaling north of 100 million dollars there are NFL players for whom teams have allowed other players to leave to clear the path for that player to succeed but there is only one team and one player for whom all of these organizational inputs were made the Eagles and Wentz what that Doug Peterson split told me was that they know that they cannot move Carson Wentz they haven't invested so much into this dude that everybody else is a secondary piece no matter how poorly he played last year what that Peterson split tells you 
is that their only hope right now is to fix Carson Wentz. Okay, so I want to start off with that. This is the free agency input. This is not talking about, I mean, obviously we could do an updated version if some guys get cut, some notable guys like a Jimmy G who we'll talk about a little bit later on in this video, but we're not going to go over all the guys that could possibly be cut and just start making up fucking scenarios. Otherwise, this would be a two hour long featured film, which, you know, maybe some of you guys would like, but that's not what I'm about right now. I just got back from the gym, so I do need to shower after this and I actually need to use the bathroom. I'm going to take y'all with me, but not on some freaky shit. We're going into vlog mode. It's cracking. So here's what we're doing in the bathroom. We're not taking a shit, so don't worry. I know a lot of my audience is younger dudes, and a lot of y'all do not take care of your face, which is very important if you want to stay young forever like I do. Now, I don't sleep well or ever, and a lot of y'all probably are hard workers too, so sometimes you look like shit. That is why it is important to take care of your face. Now, I feel like you're not really a YouTuber until you talk about your skincare routine or until some company comes out and like sponsors you and is like, hey, plug our skincare shit. So like this kind of makes me feel official. What's crazy is this company, Geology, I've been using for like a year and a half and I am completely new to skincare, but they reached out to me and they're like, Where we, we want to work with you. I'm like, what do you mean? Like we've been working together. You're just not paying me for it. But this is a message for all the dudes that do not take care of their face, especially you young dudes who think you're gonna be pretty forever, I've got news for you, you're not. You're gonna get old quickly unless you take care of yourself. The same way you take care of your body, you need to take care of your skin. Otherwise, you're gonna get the bags under your eyes, you're gonna start getting wrinkles and shit, you're gonna look terrible. And we're not in the business, although I look terrible, we're not in the business of looking terrible. And you might be like, I don't even know where the fuck to start. That's why Geology is beautiful. They were the first skincare thing I ever used because I had no idea what I was doing. They literally make you take a quiz on their website. You put in a couple things like what is my skin type and color and whatever, and they shoot out a perfect sample size grab bag for the first month of what you want to use. It's literally like one product in the morning or two products in the morning, two products at night, and it's and you're done. And you're going to be looking good, and that's it. It takes like two minutes. I'm going to do it right now for you, live time. Okay, first product, everyday face wash. It's literally just washing your face. You've got oils, you've got shit all over your face. Water. Pump. Lather. Wash. Do this for 30, 45 seconds. Get up all on your forehead, get up in your nasty nose oil, in your eyes and shit. You want to get the oils from underneath your eyes. That's why wrinkles happen. That's why these bags happen. That's why you start getting blemishes all over your face because you got oils building up in there. So get all the oiliest part of your faces, get up on your neck and stick your face right up under that wash again. Get a towel, rinse it down. Honestly, if you did just that, if you wash your face like one time per day, you'd be ahead of 95% of males in America. Your face will feel fucking amazing, first of all. It's 2021, and dudes are still weirded out by like taking care of themselves and washing their face. I'm telling you, it is not, not cool to take care of yourself. So you're gonna pat your face down dry, and this is where, you know, the M word. I know a lot of people don't like to use the M word, but we're gonna do it. It's called moisturizer. Now your face is nice and perfect. There is no blemishes. It's no oil anymore. And what you want to do, especially during the winter, if you're going outside, your skin is getting like ashy and rashy and red and shit. That also makes all that shit pop up on your face. That also causes wrinkles. That also causes the underbags to your eyes, which is where Vital Morning Face Cream comes in. So it's one thing. You wash your face day and night. You do it when you wake up. You do it before you go to sleep. And you do the same thing with moisturizer. As soon as you wash your face, you put it on. Go live your life. Before you go to bed, you wash your face. Put moisturizer on. When you wake up in the morning, your face will look and feel more energized. I'm telling you, young people, start now. Do not wait. If my eyes look bloodshot red, it's literally because I don't sleep. So the fact that my skin even looks okay right now is a testament to what they're doing over at Geology because this is the only skincare product I've literally ever used. Morning face cream. Do a little pumpy pump. I right, one eye or two eyes. Sorry, I can't do that in the camera. I can't see you. Get on the forehead. There you go. We're feeling good. We're energized and we are ready to talk about quarterbacks. So we're bike, geology, 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 has me looking creamy, has me looking not like a ghost anymore. Well, I'm just pale, so I do look like a ghost, but they've got my skin feeling fantastic. And because they are sponsoring the video, they hooked me up with being able to hook y'all up. If you go over to geology.com, I'll have it linked right below in the description. I'll have it linked first thing in the comment section. Use the promo code BIGDOG30. They have a beautiful sample pack for you, okay? I'm telling you, you take one quiz, you put your information, and you take one quiz, and they tell you exactly what your face needs to be using. It's a 30-day trial of everything you need. You're going to use 
promo code BIGDOG30. When you check out, you're getting 30% off off the rip, okay? I promise you, you want to be investing in yourself, especially when you're young. And even if you're old, it's never too late to start taking care of your skin. Your wife will be like, who the fuck is that? I married an ugly dude. I didn't pay for this. I want to return you, but your skin is so beautiful, I want to kiss you. That's the kind of effect it's going to have on you, all right? Back to the quarterbacks. Let's talk about Dak, because Dak is interesting coming off this, this injury, and Dallas didn't want to pay him long-term last year, so they franchised him. And I'm still, like, not sure what they're even getting at right now. Like, they didn't give him a contract last year. Well, he got injured. And he's not old. And they're going to end up paying him again. They're probably going to end up franchise tagging him if they don't give him a long-term contract. There is never a more relevant situation to use the phrase, time is money, when it comes to quarterback salaries in the NFL. Every year that you wait on not paying a quarterback, the inflation goes up. Quarterbacks are getting paid more and more each year. They want to franchise him two years in a row, they're going to pay him a shitload of money just off that franchise tag. And by the time they do want to sign him to a long-term deal, it's going to be out of control maybe they want to franchise him and make him prove that he's like the full strength next year and then give him the long-term path if you're a dallas fan what do you what do you want right now you want to give dak that fatty and you want to do it asap all in all i'd be shocked if dak is not the quarterback under center for the cowboys this upcoming year and for the next five years let's move on to trubisky who i would be shocked if he was the chicago bears quarterback they did not pick up his fifth year player option they'd have to sign him to a new deal if they wanted to continue going down the mitch trubisky rabbit hole but we've got four years of Trubisky we know what he is and I would be fucking livid as a Bears fan if they let this parade go on for any longer just like Mariota you know number two pick he's gonna get another chance somewhere not in Chicago you're holding on to Trubisky if you are in the dynasty super flex league to see where he lands he's got the rushing upside so anytime he gets an opportunity it's good for fantasy he just stinks in real life Philip Rivers he signed that one year 25 million dollar deal with the Indianapolis Colts. They got bounced in the first round of the playoff. I can't say we're surprised here. Rivers has not decided whether or not he's coming back for for the 2021 season. Rivers is a means to an end quarterback. He is not the path to an end type of quarterback at this point. And while I don't think he was a liability to the Colts this year in 2020, he wasn't going to be the one that like put them over uh put them over the edge, put them over the top and got them to the Super Bowl. It's kind of interesting because Jacoby Brissett is also a quarterback on the Colts, also going to be free agent. So like what do they do at the quarterback position here? They gave Brissett a go at the starting quarterback position, you know, last year, a couple of years ago, whatever it was. And clearly, they were not they were not sold on that. They would have let him run with the job if that was the case this year. But Brissett is not the future of this franchise. He'll probably end up elsewhere. Now, Rivers should, like, probably hang it up, okay? But we'll have to wait on whether or not he ends up retiring. I don't see him playing elsewhere just because this was, like, the perfect situation for a guy like Phillip Rivers whose arm is kind of, like, weary. He's old as shit. He can't move around the pocket. So you're putting him behind a really good offensive line with an up-and-coming defense and a really strong run game with good weapons around Like, it doesn't really get much better objectively than this situation in terms of, like, where you can actually get realistic landing spots. So the Colts are not in rebuild mode whatsoever if you look at their roster. So drafting a rookie doesn't make sense. Giving the keys to Jacob Eason doesn't make any sense. They're a team that could look to resign Rivers and you know run a bike and maybe hit the free agent market i don't know but you hold rivers for now in dynasty leagues if he does come back he's going to end up being qb2 like mid to low qb2 pretty much what he was this year which is not someone that you wanted in your lineup unlike ryan fitzpatrick when he was a starter beast some team's about to get the goat the goat back up in fitzy i mean fuck let let fitzy go to indy and, and run up that ring i bet he could do it on that offense he's, he's not going to be signed with miami again they're done they're done with the ryan fitzpatrick show they're gonna let Tua do the do his thing i think uh best case scenario is he'll do what he's always done he'll sign somewhere as a backup he'll compete and and push whoever is the starting quarterback there and he'll get into he'll get into the game a few times throughout the year and, and whatever 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 okay it's ryan fitzpatrick dalton same thing as ryan fitzpatrick minus the initial enthusiastic statement I, I said about Fitzpatrick about running back the ring whatever whatever could see Dalton signing somewhere that doesn't have like a solidified QB he's still I mean he's not he's not old I mean he's not young but he's you know, he's a little kind of fucking old but I, I could see him going somewhere that's not like a solidified quarterback somewhere maybe like uh Carolina maybe and like competing with a guy like Teddy Bridgewater to kind of push him do a little camp battle action here Dalton Fitzpatrick nothing you get excited about but Cam Newton Cam Newton this is where things I think get very interesting and I know a lot of people think he's done he's run his course he's no longer an NFL caliber quarterback he can't throw the ball he can't lead a team and he most definitely is done in New England even though you have reports from Mike Reese you have reports from Jeff Howe two very good reporters that cover the Patriots and they say that he probably has a 20 percent chance to resign with with New England they'll definitely look for other options I the only way I, I'd imagine they resign him is if they really really can't find another option I don't think they think Jared Sidov is the option there. So maybe they settle, maybe they settle, but I would be shocked if Cam is not 
somewhere competing for a starting job in 2021 outside of of New England. I mean, I know his numbers were miserable. His passing numbers were atrocious, like really, really fucking embarrassing. But what did he have to work with? Literally nobody. His like top option, Julian Elman, got hurt right off the rip, and it's not like Julian Elman's going to elevate a fucking quarterback. Anyways, he, was, he didn't have a tight end to throw, throw the ball to. His running backs were terrible. He didn't have any wide receivers to throw the ball to, okay? So I, I don't know what Cam Newton would have been this year if he had weapons, but the most popular narrative we'll probably hear when it comes to Cam Newton is signing with Washington reuniting with Ron Rivera. We know that Washington doesn't really have a stable quarterback situation. We've got to see what they do with Alex Smith. Alex Smith is actually on sort of a, a pretty big contract with Washington. $24.4 million cap hit in 2021 would be a $10 million cap hit if they decided to release him, which doesn't, I guess, really make sense. They would say $14 million, I guess, and that would make it make sense. The dollars make sense, et cetera, et cetera. We're about to fucking drop a freestyle right now. I don't know if I'll end up Washington, but I'll, t- I'll make a bold take right here. I would I I think that Cam Newton will be a starting quarterback week one somewhere in 2021. That's my bold take, but it also wouldn't surprise me if he ends up with Baltimore, right? RG3 is a free agent. Maybe he could back up Lamar, similar play style, that kind of thing. Maybe behind Burrow or Dak, you know? Maybe if they miss the opening of the season with their serious injuries, he can fill in for a couple games, something like that. You just never know. You just never know. We also don't know what Jameis Winston, man. Jameis to New England, who says no? Besides every fantasy player and Bill Belichick a thousand times over. This is probably going to be the most fun player to follow quarterback wise throughout the offseason. Breeze is basically a lock to retire. And we don't know if the Saints trust Taysom Hill at this point. Yeah, they let him start with Breeze out for a little bit. But like it was weird. It felt weird. We don't know what their trust level legitimately is in Taysom Hill. Here's what I'll say. And here's what I, I, I tweeted this out a little bit earlier yesterday. The New Orleans Saints are in financial hell from a cap standpoint. They are number 32 in terms of cap space. They're like negative $99 million in the cap. I don't even think that's hyperbole. I think that's literally the number that they're at when it comes to cap. Drew Brees obviously takes a huge cap hit, but he's probably going to retire. Jameis Winston is, he's not on quarterback money. Jameis Winston's basically on kicker money right now. He's on, he's on like veteran minimum money. Literally signed a one-year $1.1 million deal right now. Taysom Hill is on that two-year, like $16 million deal. That would be the cap hit to him. So I can't wait. I can't wait. Everybody on Twitter just shit on Taysom Hill. They shit on the, the signing that the Saints made with Taysom Hill. I can't wait for them to have Breeze retire, for Jameis Winston to walk, because they're not going to be a be able to afford Jameis Winston at starting quarterback money because of their cap. Taysom Hill is going to be the starting quarterback for the Saints next year, and Taysom Hill is going to lead them to the playoffs. And they're going to have a starting quarterback leading them to the playoffs on a $16 million cap hit. And then everybody on Twitter, as usual, is going to look like fucking clowns, and it will confirm to me that fantasy Twitter is without a doubt the dumbest crevice of the internet. But Winston, very much like Trubisky, right? He's a guy who went very high in the draft, the number one overall pick former. He's only 27 years old. We've seen quarterbacks play until they're like 57 years old at this point. He has three 4,000-yard passing seasons on his resume. He's got the 5,000-yard passing season on his resume. Of course, that comes with like 30-plus interceptions. And we also have like half the coaches in the league are quarterback whisperers. That's you know, a phrase that you hear about 8,000 times throughout the off season, which is 8,000 more times than I ever want to hear that phrase in my life because it's wildly annoying. There's someone that thinks they're going to be able to fix Jameis Winston. Someone is going to take a shot on Jameis Winston. It could be Chicago. It could be Washington. It could take over a backup role. He could even go to like a team like fucking Atlanta. That's, that's some dumb shit we would do. We would not take a quarterback at number four. We would take like Devonta Smith, sign Jameis Winston. So when Matt Ryan is not with us in 2022, we think Jameis Winston is the answer. Really is some dumb shit that Atlanta would do. I would say Winston being bike in new orleans would be i don't even think it's going to be 50 50 at this point i, I think it's 40 percent that he's back 60 percent that he's that he gone so james winston next up nick mullins is like semi-interesting i guess but also not really he's gotten a ton of play time during his years in san francisco so the more film that you have on a guy the more likely it is someone in the nfl thinks that this guy can kind of be a player or someone likes you so someone will take a shot on you now he has 17 starts to his name 25 to 21 touchdown interception ratio but more impressive 273 passing yards per game that is a really 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 high number and i haven't done the math but if you go 273 times 16 a normal season that's 4,368 passing yards a lot more than a lot of guys put up in this damn league so mullins you know we've seen him have some big games he's gone over 400 passing yards and a lot of a handful of games in that san francisco offense but we've also seen the downside of nick mullins right and we've also seen some really poor 
from poor games from him. And he's another guy sort of like maybe Dalton that will sign somewhere as a backup or to compete with someone whose starter is not strong. Like maybe he'll go to Carolina and compete with Teddy Bridgewater or something like that. Just kind of naming teams off the top of my head. I don't really know what the cap situation is for a team like Carolina. But it's interesting because Jimmy G, while he's not a free agent, he obviously took like a zillion dollars off the cap for the last you know year or whatever with the contract that he had. But they set it up so that it was so front heavy that this year, if they were to get rid of Jimmy G, it would not hit anything on there it'd be like two two million dollars to dead cap whereas last year if they got rid of jimmy g it'd be like 37 million dollars so maybe they pull some wild shit and they let jimmy walk and they sign nick mullins to like an 18 million dollar deal it didn't happen but that that's you know that's that's the thing with like a the twitter i'm talking about like jimmy g jimmy g is a guy who was taking his team to the super bowl is he a great quarterback definitely not does he make a, ter- a ton of terrible plays Sure. Is he better than Nick Mullins? Yes. Is he worth the money that they paid him last year? No. But do they have someone waiting in the wings that's better than Jimmy G? No. Like, that's the problem with everybody complaining about every quarterback in the league. They don't fucking grow on trees. There's like five of them that are elite. There's like 15 of them that are good. And there's 24 of them that are actual NFL quarterbacks. And Jimmy G falls into that. So I'm expecting Jimmy G to be the quarterback next year in San Francisco. I would hold on to Mullins, see what happens, where he ends up landing. Let's shift things over to the tight end position. This is kind of exciting. We've got some really notable names on the tight end spectrum, which we usually typically don't have in the, in the off season. Uh, when it comes to the free agent market, we've got Jonas Smith. We've got Hunter Henry. We've got Rob Gronkowski. We've got Robert Tun Yin, who is going to receive a ton of money this off season and Gerald Everett. This is a notably strong draft class for the tight end position as well in terms of like rookies and prospects. So some suitors for tight ends might be looking at youth more so than to sign these free agents. Jacksonville makes a ton of sense for a landing spot, as does New England. So New England needs a tight end. Jacksonville has a ton of cap. They are, you know, you talk about the Saints having zero cap. The the Jaguars are like the anti-New Orleans Saints. And they're going to be looking to build around Trevor Lawrence and put as many weapons and passing game pieces in that offense around him as humanely possible I also feel like nobody wastes contracts on tight ends and free agency quite like the Jacksonville Jaguars it's sort of like fucking me with Uber Eats fees it's it's pretty fucking embarrassing I also wouldn't be shocked to see the Cardinals get into the free agent game when it comes to tight ends so let's look at the tight ends we've got Jonu Smith I mean I hope I hope I hope Tennessee retains him. I hope Tennessee retains Corey Davis too and run a bike with that offense. I'd love to see them go do their thing again with Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry at full force for another year. But they probably need to put some money into that defense if we're looking at anywhere for them to, to upgrade or put their money into, right? Jonu looked like he was going to have a breakout year this year. He was Everything was lined up. He's young. He's athletic. He's explosive. He's got the role completely to himself. He ends up as like the tight end 10, which is fucking terrible in today's day and age. If you're not like a top three tight end, you really don't matter in fantasy whatsoever. I battled injuries for most of the year but technically I guess set career highs it was his fourth season 65 targets 41 catches 448 yards eight touchdowns really inconsistent as a fantasy guy all year if you had him it was like impossible to figure out when you should be throwing him into your lineup outside of the very beginning of the season but he's just 25 years old still super young for the tight end position super athletic and I think of all of the free agents in this class right now the Pats this guy is like the one I think the Pats would probably most likely go after if they do attack the the tight end position in free agency because he's wildly versatile okay and you get to invest into him in his prime for the next you know four or five years you have him you have him in that 26 to 30 age range which is beautiful for these tight ends and again Jonu Smith is a versatile guy and those are the types of players that the Patriots like to put onto their roster right be able to move around be able to move the offense fluidly through all these different types of players and Jonu's a guy who can catch the ball he's a guy who can run with the ball in his hands after the catch he's a guy who can run the fucking ball to begin with he's a guy who can block so he can do everything I think he kind of fits what the Pats like to do offensively the other big ticket name here is hunter henry now the chargers have the 11th most cap space in the league right now so it's possible that they do resign him i would actually love to see henry back in this offense and get to see them run it bike as well with herbert you know getting a full year under quarterback and them having a new head coach there so maybe they they run like a normal offense and hunter henry i think could have a year that most people have wanted him to have over the last few years and he hasn't quite had that he's still yet to play a full 16 games his 14 games this year were actually a career high so he's been in the league for four years 14 games were the highest number he's put up so that was career high as were the 92 targets the 60 receptions but it just it wasn't a great year for him overall he went over 67 receiving yards twice on the entire year and that was in weeks one with Tyrod Taylor and weeks two everything after that was was kind of downhill he caught some touchdowns but like wasn't a great year overall I'm, I'm much less excited about uh, 
If I'm a Hunter Henry owner in Dynasty, I'm a little bit nervous about that because he's sort of in that Zach Ertz, Austin Hooper mold where he's like a catch the ball and fall down guy, strong hands. But like if he's not in the right offense that wants to utilize him and really throw him the ball a lot and get a get a high number of red zone targets and end zone targets and just overall targets in between the 20s, like he's not going to be a very good fantasy tight end for you. So I hope he resigns with LA. If he doesn't, I think his value takes a pretty big hit. We have Gronk. He's either resigning with Tampa Bay and Brady and running that shit bike or he's retiring I would I would be shocked if he signed with a new team just just to play for the fuck of playing it now Robert Tunyon what a year 11 touchdowns he ties Kelsey for the league lead among tight ends however however and why I doubt the Packers re-sign him are the rest of his numbers so he caught 11 touchdowns but he had 59 targets which was 24th among tight ends he had 52 catches 586 receiving yards both those numbers were 13th among tight ends now the the touchdowns great to see Aaron Rodgers threw 48 of them the touchdowns are more of a right place right time thing they're not dependable right when you sign with a new team they're not like oh this guy's a great touchdown catcher you're either a playmaker or you're not really a playmaker and those other stats they don't say Tunyon's not a playmaker but they do say he's more of the league average maybe a little bit of an above average player than an elite type of tight end player and he's turning 27 he'll be 27 next year so this is the time for him to cash in on that big year like you couldn't have had a a more perfect timed 11 touchdown season for a tight end than right now because he's on his contract year and someone someone is going to pay up for him this is like I've, I've never seen a more Jacksonville Jaguar sign right now like this is I would not be shocked whatsoever if Robert Tunyon gets a huge contract from the Jacksonville Jaguars and end up overpaying him very Jaguar-esque good player great year and I don't want I don't want to downplay anything right because he's he's not going to be a dud I think Tunyon's actually probably here to stay as like a low-end tight end one maybe a high-end tight end two he's actually a wildly athletic player which I don't think most people knew when he started his breakout this year so the ceiling could absolutely be there but I think whoever signs him is likely paying for the ceiling that we just saw from Robert Tunyon in Green Bay obviously if you own him you're kind of holding on to him I highly doubt he re-signs with Green Bay they obviously have Aaron Jones on the docket and they have to bring some kind of wide receiver in there I would be pretty surprised they've got Gerald Everett another super athletic player to keep an eye on but he's not he's not like that that young anymore because we've been saying Gerald Everett's young and he's he's explosive and he's a good playmaker he's gonna be 27 next year he's like 26 26- Point seven or whatever the decimal was they had in player profiler so it would have been nice to see a breakout at some point a little bit of a breakout at some point to this point of his career but we've seen a lot of late breakouts especially with guys that look like Gerald Everett and his athletic profile so doubtful that he's like a tight end one next year or anything but I'm certainly like intrigued to see where he lands right Arizona would be a, a spot to keep an eye on because they just like athletic players that can make plays with the ball in their hands and I think Everett's that kind of guy I wouldn't hate him coming to Atlanta either I would like Atlanta to bring Gerald Everett on right and have someone to kind of counteract Hayden Hurst's fucking unathletic ass no I like Hayden Hurst actually I think you might have a big year that's everybody that's everybody notable okay and all of this stuff is per spotrack.com s-p-o-t-r-a-c they have all the contracts that stands for sports contracts so they just fucking cut both words in half and smack them together like a sandwich you'll be able to see any free agents these are just the notable free agents these are obviously not all of them there are a zillion free agents going on this year but these are the ones i think are most noticeable to just nfl fans to fantasy football players especially those you in like dynasty leagues that are starting to look at this stuff and knowing you know do i move this guy for a rookie pick xyz i've seen tunyon move a couple times already in in some of my leagues for things like a second round draft pick and whatnot so i hope this is valuable i hope this is helpful if it was and you want to support the brand make sure you go check it i mean not even supporting the brand support yourself support your health support your skin okay look better look brighter look more energized i promise you it is cool to take care of yourselves it is 2021 gentlemen please refresh your skin i'm tired of looking at your old ugly asses geology.com link down below promo code big dog 30 will get you 30 percent off their month package that has everything you need to take care of yourself for the next 30 days i promise you're going to be looking beautiful by the 30 days and then you'll want to re-up on that love y'all hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed we'll see you on fade the public tomorrow for the fantasy award show that took us about 12 hours to film 